Hey there. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, you know when I can put TikTok in the title, I'm happy. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this video is going to come in a bit of a defense of TikTok, if you will, uh, based on my research and my findings and my interpretation of the facts. This is a fact channel, okay? I like talking about facts, okay? That's where I really get into, especially when it comes to things like cybersecurity, right? Now, we talk about data breaches all the time, and people are like, Muda, why are you so paranoid? I'm paranoid because this kind of stuff happens all the time. And when it comes to data, it is like gold. It is the most valuable resource that humanity has created, and it is what every corporation is out there willing to farm and use against you day after day. Now, if you use any form of social media service, whether it be TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Google services, anything, they are all scraping your data. Okay, that's just how it works, all right? No one more is evil than the other, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, TikTok has been under fire for data uh, compromising for a lot of data-related issues for the last few years. You know, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that they're a little new on the block. They hail from a country that is basically backdoored into every tech company that they have. And not that every country hasn't backdoored into every single tech service that's running in their country. If you want to blame China, for instance, you might as well blame the U.S. for the prison systems. You might as well blame Russia for being in, well, basically every single service they have, too. Everybody is involved in everything. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to TikTok, they have multiple divisions. TikTok for the United States, which I believe is co-partnered with Oracle uh, and Microsoft. And then you have uh, TikTok Douyin in China, okay, which is like their own version of TikTok. Totally cleaner than the ones we have for the rest of the world. Now, unfortunately, TikTok has been behind. Over 2 billion users have actually been hacked from, from TikTok's uh, database. Now, ladies and gentlemen, 2 billion is a lot of users. To put it into context, uh, this is like Shanghai data breach level. Remember when we like came across the Shanghai police system being like breached? This is pretty big. Now, TikTok being breached means that a lot of users from all over the world would probably have to change their usernames and passwords. Now, ladies and gentlemen, to come across this, one of the first little rumblings of the story came out from Beehive Cybersecurity. Now, for instance, they basically said, hey guys, TikTok breach is confirmed. And they reviewed a sample of the extracted data to all of our email subscribers and private clients. We've already sent out warning communications. So this is when I saw it from these guys and they're pretty reputable at what they do. But I wanted to look in a little bit further, okay? Because when it comes to cybersecurity, it's always great when you have a second, third, fourth, fifth opinion. Now where it first started was this Twitter user, this uh, this user who posted under the name at aggressive curl. If you have no idea what's happened, account has been suspended. Because uh, you know, they obviously violated the rules, all right? It wasn't it wasn't exactly fun time at the beach for them. Now, of course, what happened over here was on a very notorious hacker forum that I'm not going to be detailing for obvious reasons. They had posted a uh, post over here. Hello, non-toxic community. Just here to post a vast array of images and screenshots from the 2022 TikTok and WeChat data breach. It has literally just happened to where they actually post the aggressive girl like paste. Now, one of the users, hell yeah, fuck the, uh, I gotta censor that, that's a little racist. Glad I never signed up. Also, hi, Kenny and Muda. <laughs> I am not involved at all with any potential cyber breaches, all right? Just saying that for legal reasons. Kenny would be the amazing YouTuber Mental Outlaw, so check him out if you want, because he makes some solid banger stuff. Now, of course, no poll this time. We have to describe if you want to sell it or release it to the public. Given the record count, which is above 500 million, it'll be a tough choice. Our inbox is full at the moment. So if you are from any news site, please contact us here at Against the West at riseup.net. All non-journalists will be purged. Download an extremely basic sample, which I already have. Uh, and then, of course, they added a bunch of edits over here, okay? So they were basically talking about how they pulled things from the uh, Oracle server, the cabinet cloud, if you will. They had about 1.6 billion. And then, finally, they came to the number of 2.05 billion users affected with a system si with a size, a database size, of 790 gigabytes, right? We're banned on Twitter for some reason. People are confused on Twitter that the full data is 790 gigabytes. It's not. The full is 6.7 terabytes in total, obviously. Regarding the people as well as TikTok themselves claiming that it's a scrape and that it's not from TikTok. Then could they please explain why there's cookies saved in the samples that were given as well as there being so much information? Find it very sketchy that as soon as news hits Twitter, we're suspended. Now, of course, they were even suspended on this hacker forum, this illicit hacker forum, by the way, where they were banned for lying about data breaches, okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, even the site that they were on 
they got completely nuked off of because even they were able to smell some of the sassiness, if you will. Now, let's look a little bit closer at a data breach, okay? Has TikTok actually been breached? Now, in this case, I'm going to actually whip out the data breach for us to look into because uh, I think that's really important. Now, there have been plenty of users like Troy Hunt, for instance. If you don't know who he is, he's the creator of Have I Been Pwned, a website you can use to check if you have been compromised in any data breach around the world. Now, of course, he actually posted an amazing thread that talked about, is this possibly fake? Now, I wanted to look at this myself just because I wanted to cover this, and I wanted to really assess this and show you what these breaches look like. Now, here I've downloaded the sample that they've had, okay? Now, I'm going to preface this by saying do not download stuff like this, okay? You don't know if any of this, is, this stuff is filled with malware. Any of the source code they may have leaked out could be filled with malware. You have no idea, okay? Leave this to people who know what they're doing. I might be a moron at a lot of things, but at least I know how to keep my computer clean. So I downloaded the sample, which contains TikTok and WeChat. Now, it's interesting how they have WeChat, which is another Chinese service. They're completely owned by separate companies. ByteDance owns TikTok, and uh, WeChat is owned by, I think, Tencent. Uh, even though they're all backdoored by China, they're still two separate, you know, companies. So I don't know why they bundled them together. Now, we're not really interested in the WeChat sample. We want to uh, sample. We want to look into the TikTok folder. Now, here they got a bunch of CSV files, which are going to be from the alleged database, if you will. And I want to actually look into a few of these myself. Now, I'm going to fire up something known as LibreOffice, which is basically just the Excel uh, spreadsheet version over here. And one of them comes from record PayPal order, okay, trade. Now, when we open up this CSV, it's a little bit sussy to look into because this CSV itself has some rather weird information. So, for instance, they talk about, you know, PayPal IDs. They talk about trade currency. So, they're all U.S. dollars, how much they traded. So, like 30 bucks and whatnot. And then they talk about shipping costs, which doesn't include anything because... It's a PayPal transaction. I don't know where I don't know where they got shipping out of. And then of course you've got the times and then you've got various emails. Now the emails are interesting because their domains are business.example.com. And of course all the names are John Doe. And of course they're shipping from San Jose, California with the same exact zip code. Uh, so realistically, this is all junk data that, that they're showing. So one of the possible like CSVs that we're looking at, one of these alleged leaks, appears to all be junk data. Now here in this case, even their like sys user uh, field is just all junk data anyways. Now, one of the more realistic looking uh, leaks is the TikTok video username parse record CSV. Now, this is a rather interesting one because I guess what they're trying to prove here is that they've downloaded the cookies and like the various like IDs of <laughs> video files. So let me show you an example. When you open this uh, thing, it contains at least 615 lines. Now, of course, we're going to look at line number 605 just as an example. Now, here in line number 605 in the D cell, which uh, let's go up to the top real quick and I'll show you what it is. They've got video descriptions, the video ID, which is the idea of the video uh, in, in TikTok servers, you know, striped across the world and the author behind the video. So the actual poster. So we're going to go all the way back down to that one cell again. And we're going to just, you know, confirm if this information is accurate. Now here in CapCut, what we're going to do is we're going to get the URL. So inside the actual like uh, thing over here, you can see in this cell, they actually have the URLs for the videos. And all you have to do is copy these URLs, open up any browser. So in this case, I'm just gonna whip up Microsoft Edge, paste that in there, hit enter. And of course, what you'll notice is this one video at this point here. So this one comes at us from Hyten Official. Now, of course, if I actually look into it here, you can see hashtag CapCut. So they actually have like, you know, the it, it actually matches the description to that extent. So you can see right here before CapCut, the video ID makes exact matches. So 687, 588, 647, 377, 468, 1345. And again, some of these videos I believe are due edited. So like they, people have reacted to them. So I believe their video IDs are gonna be the same over TikTok servers, just because it's not gonna re-upload the same video or, or just, just it, it's better to have like one video striped across and the same like video uh, mirrored a hundred times across their servers just for efficiency's sake. So what I'm trying to get at is in this list, all of this information makes sense. However, ladies and gentlemen, this information is incredibly scrapable, which means in this leak, 
or sorry, this dump of TikTok information, this multiple terabyte dump of one of the fastest growing social networks in the world, a lot of the information seems either completely junk or in some cases, it's highly scrapable information that has basically been grabbed from URL fields, uh, inspect searches, just basically like, you know, sniffing the site, if you will, too. So all this information gets taken and it gets put into a database that gets shared onto these hacker websites. Now, you might be wondering, why would somebody go through the effort to fake the data breach? Now, of course, TikTok says they have not been breached. Now, you might be wondering, well, of course they would say that. And it's oftentimes not the case. Anytime a company does get hacked, it's oftentimes better for them to tell that they've actually been hacked, that they've actually been breached. If they get caught lying about these things, it could look bad on their shareholders, it could look bad on their investors, it would look bad on their responsibility to the actual customer that they are servicing. Because if you tell people that they have been breached, like most companies do, it allows you, the user, to start changing your passwords, not just on TikTok, but anywhere else you may have reused that password or have shared that email uh, that has been scraped on this database. Now, of course, in this case, why somebody would leak or, or why somebody would fake a data breach, if you will, is very simply for financial reasons, okay? To understand if you can make a credible looking breach, even though in today's day and age with all the cybersecurity researchers in the world having access to Twitter and various social medias that are able to debunk this pretty well, Creating these hacks serves as uh, creating these like uh, data breaches, these fake ones serves very lucratively because if you put this up for hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars and it's actually it actually looks real enough, some dumb goober might be dumb enough to pay for it for their own nefarious reasons, which is sort of the end goal for these situations. Now, of course, data breaches like this happen a lot, a lot more than you would think. But when it comes to situations like this, you have to look just a little bit further. I think at the end of this, the biggest uh, takeaway from all of this is to understand how much of your data can be part of these data breaches and just to the extent of how much information you give up on a daily basis. Look, there are tech companies all over the world and a lot of them are vying to get access to the very information that you hold near and dear to yourself for private reasons. You should understand that anytime you use any of these applications, you're giving up a level of information that you may not entirely be comfortable with. And that's why you have to make sure you pick and choose exactly what you want to give up and just how comfortable you are. Look, you can't completely shut yourself down and live in the goddamn bubble. That's just not possible anymore, okay? Unless you're going complete off grid. But you have to understand that there's some level of tolerance you have to have for how much information you give up. And for me, I understand that I have to give up a lot of my private information, but I typically work with services that I get something out of. I don't like Google spying on my information and taking it, but I give Google a lot of the access because I use a lot of their services for my personal life and my business. I don't use TikTok because I don't really get anything out of it. So I don't download it, I don't bother with it, I don't even engage with the application in any meaningful way. Same thing with things like TikTok, or sorry, Twitter or Facebook. I may utilize these tools, but I'm not giving them any information that they already probably wouldn't get through simpler scrapes, if you will. But when it comes to TikTok's data breach, I think I can comfortably say that I agree with TikTok. I don't think that they have been hacked. I think what I looked at is complete fake nonsense. And if anything, this video should teach you that if you are somebody who wants to verify this news for yourself, then you can check some of these examples. I would never recommend you download these at all. But if you are capable enough and you do want to put your little investigations on and you are smart enough enough, and I'm completely disclaiming any of my involvement in you messing up your computer if you choose to get involved in this kind of nonsense, then it can be rather easy to verify when data is junk, when data is easily scrapable. You have to understand that when these data breaches happen, you gotta make sure that they're actually breaches. This doesn't look like a breach, but maybe I might be wrong. Maybe TikTok did get breached, who knows? There's always a small chance out there. But I personally am leading more towards it not happening. Ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it, I am out.